What's happening in San Diego? This is Laura Jane, and I am here with Ji Yoon Kim in the studio at Thunderbird Analog Recording Studio. And we are going to be talking about classical piano. She has a brand new record coming out in December on the 9th called Over Above Beyond. And we're going to kick off the interview with uh, talking about this first track that we're going to feature. This is actually the 17th track on the CD. It's called Gollywog's Cakewalk and it's by Debussy. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. It's Bye. our pleasure. I can't wait for all of San Diego to hear your new record, and hopefully 300 lucky people will be going to your <laughs> CD release concert. So tell me about why you selected Gollywog's Cakewalk. Well, uh, for this particular album, I was imagine I am flying over about beyond. And uh, in that flying feeling, I wanted to express the feeling of lightness and a sense of hope through it. Um, for a particular, this piece uh, gives me always a smile and a little bit more like, uh, if this is a genre, it's like a fable uh, fantasy genre. So I kind of imagine um, there's a wood scene, there are the squirrels and tigers and bear hands in hands and going somewhere and they're having great fun and makes jokes, but they actually somehow understand their language. <laughs> Maybe they're <laughs> speaking English or not, <laughs> but there's a very fun uh, way of um, creating music. And when I play this this piece, I can all uh, hear and see that those animals having great fun in the woods, maybe four o'clock in the morning, because that's active time for animals. And um, I wanted to give that sense of uh, lightness through this piece. Well, it certainly is conveyed. <laughs> I won't even tell you what I was thinking about during this piece 
or I can. Uh, I, it's, it wasn't animals, but it was, um, I, we were traveling through the desert and we were listening to your CD in the van and it reminded me of being on a stagecoach because mm. I was going through the desert, you know, in a van mm-hmm. and I was thinking, what if I was in a stagecoach? <laughs> and it was like kind of making, I don't know, like stagecoach feeling to me. I, I loved it. It made me smile as well. Mm-hmm. So thank you thank for you. the lightness mm-hmm. of that piece. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to talk a little bit about where you were born mm-hmm. and how you got inspired to play piano. Did you have one in your home as a little girl? Mm. You know, to make that story long story short, I don't have a recollection of how I started Um the earliest memory I have, I was already playing piano. Um, I started when I was four, and uh, I grew up in Korea, South Korea, in Busan, which is very similar to San Diego, very, the southern part of this Korea, which is sea city. I grew up eating sashimi every day, <laughs> kind Yum. of. <laughs> and um, I remember going to a music institute, with piano institute, on my own, which now I think about is very unreal for four years old going to the institute every day and going about my outings <laughs> with backpack and every day um, no no parents push me to do anything they were just they just trust me to do my own thing and I went to institute and I have on my routine to um, take a lesson with this instructor and and, and practice there and came home and, and I w- clearly remember the trail that I went I I go to stop by those uh, the, the guy who sells little produces and I say hello and then I go to the next stop and I felt like it was part of my life and and I don't have any memory of oh, I have to play piano, or someone pushed me to do anything. But I, I was always a musical kid who enjoys singing and play piano. Of course, at some point, I uh, had to be very serious. But that by that point, uh, that joy of music was already there. I couldn't think any other way. Uh, this is was very easy. Um, at the same time, in Korea, it's very competitive there. Um, once I started, then I realized, oh, this is, <laughs> if I play any more uh, mistake, I will be out, kind of severe competition there. I went to an art high school in Korea, which was even more severe than any entrance exam of um, college. Uh, I still had to go through all that. But even that, I remember still keep it cool. Keep it, enjoy, not thinking like, oh, I got to be number one. I got to be the top of the competition because I, otherwise I would probably already burned out. After uh, university in Korea, still I had a master's and doctorate and another master's, which is, which is more than 10 years of education. But I started when I was four, which means I would already, a lot of my friends actually unfortunately burned out when they got into university because at that point, a lot of them, play since there were four as well and this is not short sprint this is actually lifelong marathon and I I was lucky enough that I was kind of nobody pushed me so I kind of always get to have that space in my life just enjoy and I get to choose piano on my own which which I know this is my life and my passion from early on uh, so then when I went to a master's and doctorate I was still enjoying, even now. And I know this is marathon until hopefully the last day of my life I was still playing piano. Well, it sounds like you chose wisely and that music kind of chose you as well. Right. And it told you, hey, this is going to be a lot of fun. (laughs) Yes. You should probably do this because it's easy and it's fun. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. (laughs) But you're compelled easily to do the work. Right. You know, which is why I love entertainment myself right, right. is because I love to make people laugh. Mm-hmm. I love to make people cry. Right. I love to get people in the room right. I- enjoying the same vibe with you that you are. Right. And that's what I see with you and your live mm-hmm. performance. Mm-hmm. The 10 more minutes um, video from mm-hmm. YouTube was mm-hmm. just tremendous. The mm-hmm. way you're everyone in that crowd was just with you and you mm-hmm. I love the way you interacted with them. And, you know, you might want to dance during this. You know, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the... And then you kind of danced all over the piano. <laughs> and your facial expressions are so beautiful. 
I just, I loved it. Thank and I you. hope I get to see your performance on the night. Me too. I think it's a part of the joy of music is there's nothing bad about music. If I play, even if I play wrong notes, world still continues and still, <laughs> <laughs> still world peace. Uh, and it's not about perfection. It's about communication. It's about giving them uh, strength. I, I really believe the music is a gift from for me, is God, uh, and for us to enjoy. And from from music, we get healed. From music, we feel joy. And so for me, it's like how lucky I am to deal with music every day and be able to become a messenger because without through me, music is played. So I am becoming a, a great um, cup for, for music can be holded in so people can drink from it. That's beautiful right there. <laughs> well, I think we need to go on to the next beautiful song. Mm -hmm. This is Forgotten Melodies by Nikolai Metner. Mm -hmm. And let's just listen to the track and then we'll talk about it. Okay. This is Forgotten Melodies by ji Yoon Kim off of Over, Above, and Beyond. Well, that was beautiful as well. Tell me about this track. Well, this is number one track. You always decide which one could be the very first piece people are going to hear <laughs> from the record. A lot of thoughts into it. So as when you open the concert, what will, will be the first piece that I'll play? So I thought about a lot what could be, and I chose this particular uh, track to be the first, because this really represents well the sense of flying. I really imagine I am uh, an eagle or some a bird that flying over the horizon. 
And this piece is goes on and on. And uh, towards end, you can definitely feel like you arrived somewhere that arrived on top of the ridge, just about the sunrises. So that really visually, I feel the sense of lifted and flying. And that really uh, is the core message of my album over about beyond. Let's dream and soar together over about beyond and that is my wish through this this track is you know i uh, somehow i'm flying will you join me magnificent and i've never heard of this composer before what is his background his russian composer is the same as rockman rockmanov um same so, era so, same era right okay. it's, it's just funny because it's called big forgotten melodies because he's often forgotten <laughs> but, oh. Oh, i know but he's really really magnificent uh, significant uh, composer that all of his, especially with the piano music, has so much melodic um, beauty in it. Often not much played it, but once you discover, like, wow, I would like to play, explore more about this composer, that's my also hope for people, like, I never heard of Metner. Oh, but I would like to hear more about him. That's what I was thinking mm-hmm. when I was hearing mm-hmm. it. I'm like, I don't know this guy yet. <laughs> um, you know, Debussy, mm-hmm. yes, I've heard of him. Yeah. And I know some of his tracks, or tracks, compositions, <laughs> but I love that. Do you have a, a way of discovering new music? Do you spend a certain amount of time trying to listen to new mm. composers or different compositions from the same composers you like? Or mm. What's your research pattern? Um, that's interesting, because I think even if I play, like, 10 hours a day, every day, all my life, there's more than enough of the piano literature out there for me to explore. So that's, in a way, relief. It's, I'm never going to be shortage of what to play next. So in that way, I have obviously the whole bank of music that I learned or want to learn, I want to explore, but it's all like people too. It comes as a timing. So I don't really think about what could be next right now. But about that time, I need to embark next project, next concert. Somehow the peace or the mood comes to me in to the right mode. Then I, I know, oh, I really wanted to do that piece. That's the timing. That's the right season for that piece. I would love to bring that back. Or oh, I really always wanted to play that composers that particular piece that would really match well with this next project so it really comes in as a season and sometimes even though it's one of my favorite pieces, never get to play because never found the right season yet um, sometimes some pieces that it always comes in and out in my life that was actually part of the 10 more minutes because I brought up all my old friends back to in one table because that i I somehow taking these pieces along, even if season changes, this piece always kind of with me. So that was a part of the idea of 10 more minutes is that you wish just 10 more minutes of that person or just 10 more minutes of that particular great moment. And I, I wanted to gather all my old friends. But typically speaking, uh, all those pieces that I choose that insightfully come in or all of a sudden my friends are just hey have you ever heard this piece like no but that sounds the right piece right now so I, ca- I can't really predict what I would do next but I know it will come to me well I love that even after practicing every day mm-hmm. and and preparing for a concert you'd mm-hmm. still take the time to listen to mm-hmm. music on your off time you know as well when you're chopping vegetables <laughs> and making dinner or something you know and you're like hmm that's interesting I'll right. put that in my maybe pile or right. something right. you know right that's great um I want to get into the illustration that is accompanying mm-hmm one of your pieces that you're going to be doing at your concert. So on Over, Above, and Beyond, the really fascinating tracks for me were 4 through 15, Variations on an Original Theme, Opus 21, Number 1, by Johann Brahms. It's called The Philosophical Variation. Yes. And this is what's going to be illustrated Mm -hmm. at your live concerts on your next tour. Right. So 
Let's get into that. Right. Yeah. So this is also called uh, philosophical variations as a nickname. One of my favorite pieces I always wanted to play, but now is the season it came to me. I'm so looking forward to share this very gem piece, but not much played uh, for some reason. I think it's the the character of philosophical character or somewhat introverted character might shy away from some of the listeners at first hearing. Maybe it kind of takes a little time to get fall in love with it. But once you're in it, you can't believe how much beauty there is in in this piece. For me, it has 11 variations, including themes, so 12 sections in this piece. And each variation reflects a journey, uh, like maybe journey of life. And the last variation makes only sense only if you went through variation 1 through 10. Uh, So so it's like in life, we find it like, that one particular event doesn't make sense at the moment. When looking back, thinking, I know why that happened to me. That makes sense now. And when I play the last page of that whole piece, which is about 20 minutes, instead of like whole marching through uh, the grand pompere happens, instead of that, it's more like heavenly realm opens up and there is a sunshine uh, laying on you that it makes sense. It kind of lifted. There's a moment that I, I know why I play this piece, and that is there's beauty going through the each, which journey of life. And I wanted to share this piece in that level with the audience. And having their illustration, my wish was help them to understand just first hearing too. Because for me, I hear it. I, I practice and I, I go digest every note and meaning of it. But sometimes audience just, whoops, just pass through it in the one second. So some way enhance the experience just a little bit more in depth at the moment. So I think I... It makes I, you linger. Right, exactly. Right. So that moment is like a slow motion of your life a little bit. Um, with the illustration, I think it really helps see the contrast between the variations more clearly. And uh, my vision of how uh, this event lead it to the next and the last variation hits it. Hopefully everybody understand why that happened. This podcast is brought to you by Happening. Looking for something to do? Whether it's live music, dancing, theater, comedy, karaoke, trivia night, burlesque, interpretive dancing, you name it, you can find it on Happening.com. Visit H-A-P-N-Y-N.com to find out what's happening near you. Okay, let's go back to your first record. Mm-hmm. You're crowdfunded. Mm-hmm. How marvelous that everyone got behind you because it is expensive to put these things out yeah, exactly. for sure. <laughs> right. And it's um, a beautiful record. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Mm-hmm. And this is a track that you wrote mm-hmm. called 10 More Minutes. Right. Yeah, so uh, that was um, basically improvisation of me playing. Um, in New York, I recorded this uh, Octavian audio in, in New York, which I came back for my rec- new record as well. And this particular 10 more minutes is just so personal in a way because I gather all my old friends of music together in the one table. And when I recording the last piece, I was thinking, hmm, myself saying 10 more minutes, that I wish this that it was some kind of like a dream I didn't want to wake up from. And I wanted to capture that very feeling of in that studio, there's only microphone and there's um, a sound engineer and producer there, but no one else. And I wanted to capture that moment of wanting 10 more minutes myself, that very moment in that setting. And as a classical pianist, it's a more vulnerable to play my own. It's because next to Beethoven, next to Tchaikovsky, I feel like <laughs> I'm so mere poor magician. But I, I made myself vulnerable in that setting. And uh, you know what? That's how I feel it. And uh, can you feel me? I was in a very kind of vulnerable kind of way. And when i looking back and listen, and even though it's not as 
like Beethoven, but I still felt like that was me in the very moment, wanting to 10 more minutes and really reflected me well. So um, a lot of people gave me a feedback like, I really adored your composition or your improvisation there. So I think um, I'm just happy with that happen. Looking back, that was my best. All right. Well, let's take a listen. This is 10 more minutes. Is that the only original piece that is on either one of these albums? Right. For now, it is. But you're in the works for more, I hope. <laughs> uh, in my pajamas, I always do. <laughs> well, it takes a, a, a lot more effort to put that out there, but I will keep working towards it. Again, it's like a timing when the, some piece really hits me in the right timing with the right project, I would definitely share more with the world. And do you perform with orchestras or bands or <laughs> any other musicians, or are you a soloist all the way? Mm, no, I think in that way, piano is the queen of the instrument, I always say, because it can be soloist, but it can be also with orchestra or with the chamber music. It's so versatile. Uh, it, it can be introverted, but it, it can be this magnificent uh, virtuoso instrument. So as a pianist, um, majority of time, yes, I do a lot, most of the solo concert, 
but I do chamber music, which the group of trio or quintet. And also I play with orchestra as a soloist. That's a part of it. As a pianist, you have to kind of come chameleon of, of which group or setting that I will play the next. For example, next um, March, I will actually play with the Joffrey Ballet with a two piano piece by Philip Glass and the ballet dancer is on the stage, so it's me. How and fun is that? I know, right? I'm very looking forward to it. It's just kind of going to a nice excursion from um, solo, wow. solo performance. Well, it sounds like you don't really have any boundaries at all. <laughs> no. You could try anything if you wanted. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's so great. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you've have the freedom for that and that you find the support Mm -hmm. of your fans Mm -hmm. and your family and your team that helps you to do these magnificent things all around the world. Right. As a soloist, I kind of get to be a little more creative what I would like to create in terms of an album and a follow-up tour concerts. For example, from the 10 more minutes, there's always a microphone on the stage that I introduce each piece what it means to me before I play in that way I don't really give out the list of program beforehand Um, I always say I'm a chef that I created from appetizer to dessert very carefully but I don't want to give out all at once this is tasting menu but you (laughs) when you leave you will get uh, actually program uh, handed out to you. Oh, I like that. So it's a kind of like, yeah. I wanted to experience this music together without people looking at, oh, this is next, this is next. So it's more like coming, not as surprise, but somewhat surprise and more engaging because I will introduce them very short, what it means to me, what, what I want them to listen for, basically. So um, I find that it's more interactive, uh, more communication that way with me as a pianist, a uh, performer, and they, they as a listener. It's a last barrier that way. So this will be the same way over above beyond. They, they kind of know what I will play, which is the philosophy of variation, but other than that, that's they don't have any idea what I will be playing. I like that idea, too. <laughs> yeah, I do. And it's um, you're so theatrical with that, you know. And I think that that's great that you have such a confidence on stage mm. that you can speak mm. as well as play. I know a lot of musicians <laughs> right. would prefer not <laughs> right. to speak to their audience <laughs> and would not want to stand up away from their instrument right. and you know if you try to get a drummer to sing a song in the front without <laughs> drums in front of them very difficult they're very scared they feel naked they're so used to that instrument yeah you know and it sounds like you were confident at four mm. years old mm. you know walking mm. to school on your own saying <laughs> hi to the produce guy and making your way with your backpack and saying I'm good all good over here still having fun yeah I'm not sure I will be uh, as, as confident like let's go kind of person to begin with but more I would like to connect with people more and I find me talking about how I feel brings barrier much down and they eventually they hear music through me they're more they feel me it's easier them to for them to understand the composer and the music so I always wanted to me to be a clear glass not the plastic cup with the yellow marking all over uh, but clear so when I say you know that's how I feel I'm not sure that's how you you're going to feel it. But I wish that you kind of try to tune into this music more. And um, I think that helps them to understand and much closer to the classical music in that way, because so much emotion, so much passion into it. Sometimes we kind of shy away from classical music. Maybe that's too difficult. That's too hard to understand. But when I did that way, I found a lot of audiences respond much more So I don't have any other choice at this point because I know that helps for them to understand. Yeah, and I bet that they go home and they're like, oh, I should listen to more (laughs) classical music. I really enjoyed that. Maybe I'll look up some other Brahms tracks, you know, and become inspired. I know I was inspired listening Mm -hmm. to it. It was was great. And when you said in the sun Mm -hmm. came out on the last Mm -hmm. one, We were watching the most spectacular sunset, listening to the philosophical variations, Mm -hmm. 
going through the mountains, and the mountains were purple, and the sky was turquoise yeah. and orange, and, and it was just like I was crying. Mm, I couldn't yeah. help but cry through yeah. that whole the journey of, right. of those songs, right. and, I, and I knew they were all related. I'm like, oh, this is all. And I wasn't paying attention to the tracks. I was right. driving, right. you know, and it was really beautiful. And right. it, it did seem like a journey. Right. Yeah, that's my wish for a, each of my concerts to be experienced together. Because for me, it's another, another person to merely experience at that moment together, too. So I'm not actually giver. But I'm also a receiver at the moment. And at each concert I walk on the stage, I'm thinking like, mm, I have a, I have a, this thing that I'm going to open up together, how it's going to play out. Because each day we're a little bit different. Each day we feel differently, certain things. So each, each concert is different. It's not like even if I play the same repertoire, I play so differently than one to the, the other uh, because... That atmosphere is different, piano is different, the vibe of the audience is different, and that's the beauty of live concert coming in. Like, let's open up together the Christmas present together, you know, and it's excitement there. And I, I really hope that all the audience walking out receive something or experience something. It's not just they attend a event. More of, we went through a boot camp together and. There's some <laughs> unity afterwards because we shared experience together. Well, I think that this is a great Christmas present. <laughs> It's true. So close to Christmas. <laughs> I think that if you have people in your life that would like to have a beautiful piano CD to put under your tree, their tree, you can get Ji Yoon Kim's Over, Above, and Beyond, starting on December 9th. And which uh, label are you on here? It's a Namusu Classics. And okay. And you can get it in Amazon or iTunes. Okay. Um, anywhere. So one thing I w wanted to add on to that is uh, for this particular album, each album I always create a manual, how to listen. Um, for this one, I said, when you listen, kind of imagine... Or some image in your head. Um, later time, if you happen to find that image that you were imagining while you listen, take a picture with your phone and share hashtag over above beyond project. So that way, I see the illustration part of the philosophical variation is one example of that I shared with the world. But if you see some other image for other tract, when you share your image, then I really see how you hear it differently. I'm actually very looking forward to seeing those images because it will be different from me. So do you have a favorite social media platform that you're going to explore these hashtags on? Yeah, Instagram will be the on best. On Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have a question about the hashtag. Is it just over, above, over, above beyond project? project. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make sure because yes. I know sometimes right, true. your album has the peri right, period, periods right, after, right. so uh -huh. I understand. I have a song that I wrote called Real Rat Problem, Whoa. and there's, <laughs> there's a period after each word. <laughs> Ooh, sounds like a problem. <laughs> I don't want to get into it here with all this beauty. Let's not talk about rats. But um, remind me of your website. Mm -hmm. It's my name. People find it difficult to pronounce my name, but I always say the month of June in Southern accent, June. <laughs> uh, so my name is J-E-E-Y-O-O-N-K-I-M, jiyunkim.com. Okay, that's easy enough. Well, excellent. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I want to invite everybody who listens right now to come to my live concert December 9th. Um, I chose this embarking journey of Over Above Beyond from San Diego because now I'm based in San Diego, but I will go on to the world afterwards. And I always say the live concerts is different than listening to the CD because you are alive there, I'm alive there, we're in the same uh, space, we're sharing the very precious hour and a half together. And once we go through it, and I think you understand what I am about. So hopefully all you can make it, bring your friends and family. 
And that's at Scripps Research Institute. And that starts at 3 in the afternoon mm -hmm. on December 9th. Mm -hmm. And you can get a ticket link at jiyunkim.com mm -hmm. and purchase your tickets there, I'm sure. Right. And it's been such a pleasure to have you here it's at pleasure. Thunderbird Analog Recording Studio. And I just really love both records, mm -hmm. and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.